Awesome. So we are here today with Danielle and Farid. Hi. Hello, hello. Hi. My first, first couple that I worked with um, as a doula. You were? Yeah. Oh, I didn't mm -hmm. know that. Yeah. I only had one. I had like single moms before, mm -hmm. but or moms where the dads were not present for the birth, right? Okay. So they hired me to come in because dad wasn't going to be present. But then you guys were together. Mm -hmm. And then we had a special experience with yeah. your birth story, with your first birth story. Um, that I was hoping maybe we could touch on today and just talk yeah, about sure. whatever experiences you guys personally had from that. And so jumping in, how how was your birth story? Was it what you expected it to be? Oh, of course not. Yeah. You know, of course not. That's not, not, that's not what I planned for. Um, so what happened was my, my first son, he was born at 32 weeks. So he was a preemie. He was in the, in the queue for about a month. Um, originally what happened was I ended up going into labor at 25 weeks. Right. Um, I was with the OBGYN group first and then I decided I wanted to have a more natural birth. Mm -hmm. And that's when I hired you yes. to be my doula. And then I decided I wanted to have my child at Manchester. So I also wanted to switch to midwives. Mm -hmm. So. I switched to a midwife practice, um, and that same week they had me go for an ultrasound because mm -hmm. the five month ultrasound shows something with like the heart. So they said, you know, let's just double check, right. get another yeah. ultrasound. So I went for an ultrasound at like eight o'clock in the morning, and they called me at 10 o'clock at work, and they're like, um, I need you to go to St. Francis for another ultrasound because your cervix looks like it's shortening. And I'm like, okay. They didn't really say what was going on, they just said, not to worry you, just go get an ultrasound. So I get there, they do an ultrasound, and they say, you know, your cervix is shortening. And they, they keep saying that, like, your cervix is shortening, your cervix is right. shortening, but no one's telling me exactly what's going on. Right. And it wasn't until they were like, you know what, we're going to actually have you get undressed, and we're going to have to see if you're dilated. I'm like, dilated? What do you mean? Mm. Like, you could be going to labor right now. I was like, you're no, no way. And you know, free call me. He's like, you know, do you need me to come? I'm like, no, it's not that serious. <laughs> I'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Um, so you know, they check me. He still comes. He comes. Um, see me, and they're checking me. They're like, you know, you're two centimeters dilated, and you're having contractions. I'm like, I'm having contractions. I don't feel right, anything. Right. Right. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. They're like, you don't have back pain. I'm like, I always have back pain. I always have back pain, so it didn't feel like anything new to me. Mm -hmm. So um, they said, you know, we have to try and stop you from going to labor. Um, so at 25 weeks, they did um, magnesium, mm -hmm. they put my antibiotics, um, steroid shots, and all of that um, within like, I was there for maybe, they said I was only going to be there for a few days, right? Mm -hmm. It ended up being two weeks. Mm -hmm. So I was in the hospital up until I reached 27 weeks. Yep. So they were able to stop the contractions. I was still dilated, um, and they allowed me to go home. And thankfully, he stayed until 32 weeks. So then I went right back into labor again, um, which is still early. And they again tried to see if they could stop it. They were able to stop for maybe was like three days. It was a couple days. Yeah, yeah. a couple days, and then. I said I went in on a Wednesday and he was born 4 a.m. on Saturday so they did magnesium and that's like a two-day treatment I want to say so they did that we got to Friday um, and they're like you know you know I started having contractions and they were speeding up so they put me back on magnesium again but it wasn't working mm -hmm. and you know my contractions kept coming and coming I was like I think the baby's coming and they're like no he might not even come for like another two weeks <laughs> And I'm like, I think this baby's coming. Yeah, the baby's coming. <laughs> and I was like, I think the baby's coming. They say it's not, but I was like, I think the baby's coming. Because I kept having contractions like every five minutes, three minutes. Right. And I was like, you know, I said to the nurse, you know, I'm having contractions. Like, are you seeing this on your screen? Like, I'm having contractions. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I'll go grab the doctor. Right? I'm like, okay. So the doctor comes. Did you get there at that point? I don't know. It happened so I fast. I think I got there. <laughs> it happened so fast. After the doctor. So the doctor must have came in and then I arrived. I was, right. Thankfully, I was working at the hospital right. at the time. And right. you gave me the call and I came over. Yeah. And my water hadn't broken yet. Um, right. I was having contractions. And it wasn't until right before the doctor walked into the room is when my that. water broke. And I was like, there's a lot of fluid coming out. <laughs> and I don't know what it is. And they're like, 
you know, they, it's, my water was just start breaking and, you know, and the doctor comes in, she takes it, she's like, okay, we're gonna have you start pushing, yeah. just like that. She's like, you're gonna have to start pushing right now. I was not prepared. <laughs> I remember <laughs> every, everyone was sort of just like, wait, what? what? Yeah, yeah. First they're like, no, the baby's not coming. And then it's like, oh, you gotta start pushing. Yeah. Yeah, and so it, it was an experience, you know, I gave birth. I was able to do it natural, which is what I wanted. Even though he came early, I was able to do it natural. Um, I would say the only thing that sucks was that, you know, you give birth and then you don't get to hold your child, you right. know? And I didn't get to see him for maybe like another hour, two hours afterwards. Yeah, because he had to go to the NICU. Yeah, right. yep. he mm -hmm. had to go to the NICU. It's like, yeah, it was an experience for sure. Not how I wanted to go, of course, but I'm just glad that he, he was born healthy. Yes. And he's home and you would never even know looking at him that he was born healthy. You know, early. Such a rambunctious little boy. Oh, Healthy, yeah. totally into things. Everything. He's like taking charge. <laughs> His presence is just like I'm here, <laughs> which is awesome. And so now for you, Fareed, how yeah. how was the experience from your perspective? Well, again, she's do, she did all the work. She's right. she has all the strength. I don't know how I don't know how y'all do it, um, but it was a little stressful. Um, I do remember. I think what it was like. It was right before New Year's around the time because he was his, his due date was like yeah, eight, it April happened something. Yeah, like two days after Christmas. Yeah, and um, and she's like, oh, I, I, you should probably come now. Because at first I was like, you want me to come? She's like, no. Nah. But then she's like, come to the hospital. And because at that point she couldn't leave, she had to stay in the hospital. But I was still in denial at the she's, point. Yeah, she's still kind of in denial. Like, oh, you're gonna do steroid shots? So I was like, okay, so I'll come back tomorrow for the second one. They're like, no, you're not leaving. And I was like. What? So I had to go. I had to get like get your stuff and yeah. bring it there. And I, I, I was just really just trying to play a supportive role and mm -hmm. not show that I was stressing. To, to obviously, you know, not because if she sees me stressing, then you know that's gonna yeah. make her stress. And I, I don't want to put that stress onto the baby as well. So I was just trying to hold it in. Um, I did a lot of praying during that time, you know, because again, that was that have been like four months early around that time, right? Because mm -hmm. right. usually you do in April, and he almost came around New Year, so. That, that was that was pretty scary. I mean, there's no other way to put it, but, you know, I just kept the faith. I did whatever I could to make sure I supported her. I, you know, I was working, you know, mm -hmm. stopped in at the hospital, you know, the, the oatmeal cookies. She always saved me one of the oatmeal cookies, but uh, I'm sure that wasn't fun sitting in the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like when you're used to just being out on your own and you're just right. stuck to this room. But uh, after two weeks, I was just glad that he didn't come and he was able to bake a little bit longer, mm -hmm. right? And then um, come February... At that point, it was like, if he comes now, you know, my thing is that it, it's not up to us when the baby's going to come, right? You know, that's a higher power. That's what I believe. So it was, it was, whatever was going to happen at that point was going to happen. I just wanted to make sure I was there to support her whatever way she needed. Um, funny story, I actually, uh, <laughs> I, was gonna say I, I was, I was trying, I was trying to help her during the breathing and, and not everybody knows this. My friends know it. They, they make fun of me for it. I'm trying to help her with the breathing. So while I'm t helping her breathe, I'm do actually doing the breathing, and I end up passing out. <laughs> sure did. During during the sure uh, did. during the <laughs> during the delivery, um, I'm fine. I pop right back up. I yes. had a little sip of apple juice, and I was right back in the fight. Right. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was it was an experience, and um, you know, he, he I think he was how 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 much did he weigh? Like two. Like three like pounds three pounds and like four ounces yeah and like, like seeing him hooked up to all that stuff you know that was that was tough to see but again you look at him now yeah the boy you can't you can't get him to stop moving so mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. everything happened for a reason we learned a lot from, i feel like we got closer because of it and um yeah i'm just i'm just glad he's here and he's healthy awesome yeah, bringing it back to that story of you passing out really oh, quickly. Yeah. <laughs> it was dead down, dead down, dead down right? Dead down. And I literally was looking at Fareed. He was like, okay, okay. And I'm like, okay, cool. I look back and I hear his doop. And I'm like, Fareed? And I was so bushy. I was like, oh, well, he didn't even leave right. him on the floor. <laughs> she didn't even care about me in that moment. She was like, oh, what? He'll be fine. And then she's just like, we need a wheelchair for dad. Someone come get dad. And, and let me let me say, like, she doesn't, she doesn't, like, look at it that way and, She's so tough. Like she wasn't like during the time we was in that in in in, in the hospital. Like I'm going getting her ice and stuff. I'm hearing the, the screams from other rooms of women giving birth, right? And it's like I can hear it through the the soundproof doors. She didn't make a peep. Yeah. She didn't make a, she did she, she with, with, with no calm. with no with no drugs, nothing. Fully natural. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So 
I just wanted to shout that out. I wanted to flag that how strong and and, and how, how 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 she held her composure through it. Definitely, is is amazing. I don't, Definitely, men, we couldn't with do it like Being that. an unexpected situation, mm. we didn't even fully cover much of no, the material we didn't, we didn't, or prep for pushing or anything no. because. He was he was coming and it was like yeah, yeah, there was yeah. videos to watch. We were just like, okay, cool. We're just going to we're just gonna wing it. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I'd yeah. pop in, I'd yeah. see you, I would stay sometimes mm -hmm, in the room. Mm -hmm. Um like I know we thought he was coming the Wednesday and everyone was like sleeping on the floor. It was like my sisters were on the right. floor, you were on the yeah. floor, everyone. We were was like, sleeping. We're not leaving. Like this baby's coming and he, you know, he didn't come mm -hmm. and then finally I see you again, baby's coming out. You yeah. Know? So it didn't really go as we planned, but yeah. It was still an experience and a good learning lesson for you, right? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely my yeah. biggest learning lesson. <laughs> <laughs> and now I tell moms, right, uh, you know, women of color, we have higher rates of premature birth right. just naturally. And so, and it dates back to generationally the traumas that we've experienced with our race and things mm -hmm. and what we might have endured being in our mother's wombs from their experience in life. So that's something that most people don't know mm -mm. right as your mom is born she's born with the eggs for the next generation right. already and right. so you're going to experience whatever trauma she has she's endured but now i tell my moms listen you have to i need you to watch certain videos by a certain time frame like this is important i need you to cover this material so if nothing else i know that we've covered or you've grasped the concept mm -hmm. of what to expect when going into labor so your son has done wonders for me too in my business and other moms now so that's awesome and so now after he's born and he's spending some time in the NICU how long did it take for you before you were discharged um two days two, two days and yeah. how long did he stay in the NICU a month, a month. Three days, yeah. mm -hmm. and how was now that experience going back to visit him in the NICU uh it was it was stressful because I was also, breastfeeding was very important to me, so um, and they say, you know, breast milk is the best for them while they're in the NICU, so, you know, I was, even though I was still recovering from labor, um, you know, I started to make sure I was pumping every three three hours, and then I was going to see him, make sure he's getting, like, skin to skin contact, and so, and you know, like, there were, it was up and down. Right. It was up and down, so some days he was really great, and then, you know, he'll have um, what they call a spell where he's on his like breathe on his own and stuff like that and he wasn't able to feed on his own for a really long time so he had the tubes uh, so just seeing a child hooked up like that you know it's it's hard to see as a mom is like and thankfully I was able to hold him so because I know sometimes kids are born so early you can't even get that skin to skin contact so I was glad that we were able to do that and I tried to spend as much time as I, as I could with him every day eventually I had to go back to work while he was in the NICU right so it's, it's like you want to spend all day with them mm -hmm. and make sure they know that you're there um, so that was just hard I can't come back home right and whenever I had to pump I would have to watch videos or look at pictures of him mm -hmm. just to help with the milk production um, so that was hard but looking back I feel like it flew by fast and I can't believe we already got through that mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but it's like you have to also I had to make sure that you're checking what the nurses were doing, you know, make right. sure mm -hmm. you they let you know what they're doing, any medications they're giving him. Um, so, you know, I was on top of that. And then just making sure every day I went there, I was like, well, how much does he weigh now? How much milk is he drinking now? Have you tried feeding him from a bottle, you know? I wanted to come home as soon as he could right. and they said he could come home once he reached like what four pounds or something like that and he was able to feed on his own and he wasn't able to feed on his own until right until he turned you know close to 36 weeks yeah and as soon as he did that he came home which is great now do you feel like you were supported well from your hospital staff or did you have a community because oftentimes when a premature baby is born no one else in the family has had yeah, a I wouldn't birth. say in the hospital, no, mm -hmm. I didn't. It's yeah. like even when I went to visit him, nobody really like made sure I was okay or mm -hmm. see how I was doing. Um, not really. And you see different nurses come through and, you know, yeah. he was there long enough where I got to know all the nurses, but the support for me, no. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when I reached out to you and I was like, you know, is there any support right. anywhere for, you know, women going through this? Yeah. Um, 
And yeah, the only support I have was, you know, just my family and my husband. Mm-hmm. And how about you, Fareed? Did you have any other friends that had given birth prematurely, or were you supported by the hospital staff? Um, no, I, I was her support. Yeah. Um, because, so I have a certain view on just, like, healthcare in general in America. Yes. And again, coming from my parents, like, I was born at home, all natural. Mm-hmm. And again, I know that there's different ideas on how what they believe should happen when a child is born uh from what we we believe right and so like just dealing with and, and don't, don't get me wrong there were some great nurses there but I, I i just believe that the system in general like they have a certain idea of what they should be giving you like for one we don't do vaccines right and that's our personal choice regardless of what somebody else may believe or not mm-hmm. but i feel like the minute we decided we you know, we, we told them or expressed our feelings around that. I feel like a little bit of the energy changed, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and even to the point where I, at one point I actually had a, a, a one of the, she's a doctor or a nurse. Yeah, doctor. You know, she kind of got really unprofessional because I, you know, they were trying to give the baby shots. They were trying to give her shots, and like we don't we don't want that, right? Yeah. This is the natural way we want our child born. We don't want anything to interfere with that. And I can go really deep in that, but I I won't right now. But as a doctor, you know, she, you know, again, I, I get it. They're incentivized to have people vaccinated, right? And so for her to come out and say, like, well, I told her, like, well, I don't do vaccines. That's not really so, Oh, you're the one that's giving out all these diseases. That's what she said. Like, that's a very, like, how unprofessional right. is that to say that? And very illogical as well because you have to have something to give it out. I've been pretty healthy my whole life. So, mm-hmm. you know, I had to kind of check her on that. And I didn't really like the way she came off with that tone. Um, and just the pressure behind you should take this or you need to take this like look we said we don't want it we don't want it right mm-hmm. and that's it get whatever paperwork you need to sign but i feel like i had to be the one to really like push that energy out there yeah. to, you know to okay this is what we're not doing had, just for example had i not you know had she not had me there then you know as a woman who just gave birth like you could be easily persuaded yes. to do something that maybe against your will right or something that you didn't even know that you can decline exactly and going right. in with that we had declined it and then they someone came back with the paperwork when he wasn't there and um and she was like, well, here's just the paperwork just to sign um, for us to give it. I was like, I already like, said like that we, we wouldn't read it. it. Right. Like we wouldn't read it. Mm-hmm. You know? They definitely checked the box like, okay, yes, we're getting it. I was like, and I looked and I was like, we're, I already said we're not doing it. And it almost reminded me mm-hmm. of like, I don't know if anybody's been to a timeshare presentation, right? Mm-hmm. You want to go there and get your uh, your, free, your free cruise ticket. Right. You just got to sit there and, mm-hmm. and watch the presentation about, you know, whatever timeshare and then you get out and you you know say okay i want my my ticket you know i don't want i don't want the presentation you got about four or five other people coming over there circling numbers it almost felt like a trying to leave a timeshare presentation mm-hmm. without buying the timeshare and and that was very telling to me because as a person who understands business i'm looking at it as like do you really care about us or my health or my wife's health or what she needs or do you care about whatever the objectives are coming up from from up top yeah. and h- how they they get paid so that that's just my, a little bit of a way I felt about it, but you know, again, I'm glad I had that knowledge and I was able to be there to support my wife. Um, so everything went smoothly. It just I had to kind of be the person, the, the buffer between, you know, what they wanted to push on us and what we were going, what we already had planned to do for our child. I am so so happy and thankful that you were definitely there. I've yeah. attended births at that hospital, mm-hmm. and there are families that come in that you know might have transferred in from home births. And they don't want these vaccines, and I've been able to see mm-hmm. how aggressive they come mm-hmm. in, and how. And so I have to prep moms and, and couples. Like right. they're gonna come in more than once, and they're gonna keep asking you. Mm-hmm. They're gonna send someone in to maybe say your baby can die. Mm-hmm. They'll flat out lie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One nurse came in, and this wasn't for this was for my our daughter. A nurse came in, and she knew us from before, and she's like, I know you, don't, you guys don't do vaccines, so I'm just gonna bring the paperwork out to sign so you're not gonna take it. And another nurse comes in, and she said, Okay, here's where to sign. So I read it. And she had, she had pointed to where it says yes. So then I gave it back to her after checking no. And she's like, oh, I thought you were getting it. I was like, no. So oh, another nurse definitely said you were getting it. Somebody's lying. Right. And she was just here. So, it says you know, she understood mm. our, our, our values exactly. and our wants and our needs. And now here you are. Yeah. So. Right. And that is one of the most holistic it's a family birthing center. Right. right. Imagine how aggressive and they that's are at regular hospitals. That place too. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And so right. for now, for this one specific need to be sort of brushed away or overlooked, it mm-hmm. just it really makes you wonder what your experience could be like at a larger uh, 
entity or mm-hmm. comp- hospital here in the area. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then now you mentioned the supports. And so when you gave me that call, we essentially created a support we group did. for moms yeah, of yeah. color, right? We, yeah. we created a NICU group that went really, really well. Unfortunately, COVID kind of dismantled that, but I'm seeing there's still a need. Mm-hmm. I was out recently and a mom walked up to me and hugged me and she's like, when are we meeting again? And I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> I have to bring that back again. But thankfully, you know, families are comfortable with coming back out now mm-hmm. and meeting again in person. Were there any, now going into parenthood with a NICU baby and your transition home with your preemie, mm-hmm. how was that for you? Now, parenting on its own with a newborn presents right. some challenges now right. for um, the relationship dynamic when you transition home and caring for a baby. But now you have a baby with maybe some additional needs. Mm-hmm. How was that for you, the both of you? Um, I mean, this is my first child, so like right. I didn't know what to expect. And mm-hmm. so I think I was a little scared about everything, like him sleeping. Like I was, I would stay up just watching him sleep in case he had a spell and wasn't breathing or something. Mm-hmm. You know, so like the first few weeks, that's what I was scared that, you know, something would happen where he would just stop breathing or... Um, I was having trouble trouble latching, so he was mostly bottle feeding. I was, you know, stressing like making sure he's getting enough milk. Mm-hmm. Or, um, and then they wanted me to give him the formula. Yep. For Nikki babies, mm-hmm. I usually get this formula, but he just wouldn't drink it. Mm-hmm. He kept spitting it up, so I decided to just stop giving it to him. You know, I probably wouldn't give it to him twice, mm-hmm. and so you know, I was stressed like. I was stressed about him gaining weight, right? Um, and if that was going to be a problem with just giving him breast milk, mm-hmm. you know. But ultimately, I feel like my body provides whatever he needs, right? Absolutely. So I wasn't really that stressed about not giving him the formula because I wanted what was best for him. If he wasn't like able to digest that, then I wasn't going to give it to right. him. Right. We don't know what's in there. His right. body is naturally right. rejecting it, and if he's accepting what your body is producing. Mm-hmm then you definitely it's like why not give him what Mm -hmm. I was made to do yeah yeah and then you know they tell you oh he needs to feed every three hours so even if he was sleeping I would wake him up to feed him even though I probably looking back because with Yasmin I just let her sleep and I let her tell me when she wants to eat and I wish I did that with him because I feel like I created a pattern now where he had to wake up every three hours and then it got harder getting him to sleep through the night um but ultimately, I mean, I had a lot of support. Like my sister lives with me, my husband supported me, so everyone took turns helping me out. And he was so she's a social kid, so mm-hmm. thankfully he went to everybody. Yes. Whereas Yasmin yeah, only went to me. Mm-hmm. You know, she wouldn't go to her dad, her, my yeah. sister. So that helped a lot. Um, I guess just adjusting, I, just adjusting to having a baby in the house and mm-hmm. make sure they're safe mm-hmm. and that nothing is going to happen to him like I didn't leave the house for 30 days in case he got sick you know it's right. just those worries that you have having a newborn mm-hmm. but, and now um, that they're just sort of heightened now because you have a right. preemie so it it's was like heightened. okay yes. let me stay in and, and, and maybe not venture out 30 mm-hmm. days whereas a, a mom of a, a baby that was born at their normal weight might have been you know still a little bit on high alert but mm-hmm. more likely trying to get out a little right. bit to go and do something right how about for you, Fareed, when you tra- when the transition home occurred? Were you able to, did you save time from work? Because that's actually a really good question for you. You returned to work early when he was in the NICU. Right. I'm when assuming came so home. you had time. When you, yeah, yeah, when I came when he came home, I took off. I think I was out for two months. Perfect. Two months. And having a job that will allow that mm-hmm. is definitely beneficial. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Because that's not the reality of everyone sometimes. Yeah, you have yeah. to choose if you're going to take it while they're in the NICU mm-hmm. or you're going to wait until they actually transition right. home. Yeah. And were you able to... I, I was able to take off some time. Uh, luckily for my career choice, I work in sales, so I can be pretty flexible around making my schedule. Um, but uh, but I was just excited for him to come home. You know, I... You know, I, I I understand, you know, there's science and all that stuff, but I also believe in a higher power. I believe that everything happens for a reason. So once once he came home, I was just happy. I was like, he was meant to be here. They said he was going to be social because he was around all the doctors. He's, he's a very social kid mm-hmm. now. Um, mirroring a lot of things that she that she said, you know, just you know, just kind of high alert. You know, we have a, a newborn, and you know, he's 
you came early, so we're just being very cautious. But at the end of the day, I, I you know I always believe like whatever your body's telling you is what what you should do. I don't care what they say, any formula they're telling you. Like this is a natural occurrence here that happens when a child is being born. This is the way it was made before we had any of this modern medicine, right? So like if your body's telling, don't deny what your body, your instincts are telling you mm-hmm. to do around the child. So. Um, yeah, once he, I was just happy, we were just happy he was home. Yeah. We were happy right. he was home, you know. We didn't get much sleep, right? Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and more so her than me. You know, right, I'm sure right. she's probably looking at me snoring over there at yeah. points, like, while well, yeah. she has to feed. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, we were just happy he was home. It yeah. was great. It was great. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And now, how was that experience different from Yasmin's experience? <sighs> So Yasmin, we actually, I, she was born three days before her due date. Even, mm-hmm. Which is more common. Yeah. I didn't pass out this time. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but I would say um, being pregnant with her was still stressful, a little stressful. Yes. I tried not to stress. I mean, it's out of my control. Right. You no, know, if, she, if she was to come early, that's just what's supposed to happen, right? Mm-hmm. But you don't want your child to come early. So I, I think... I didn't really relax and actually enjoy my pregnancy until I reached 36 weeks. Right. Um, but with her, we took extra steps to make sure she didn't come early. So they had me go for ultrasounds every two, every two weeks. And so it's going up until I did them until I reached I think 20, 22 month, 22, 22 weeks I think. Mm-hmm. They had me go every two weeks for ultrasound just to make sure my cervix was shortening. Um, I know in the past what they would say is that you should get, uh, is it the steroid? Progesterone? The progesterone yeah, yeah, progesterone. But a new study came out, I guess, that year, last year, where it says it's not effective. Mm. It's not effective at all. So, you know, there was no point. And so because of that, insurance wasn't covering it, even if I wanted to do it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So some insurance companies don't cover it, or your copay is like $2,000 for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, you know, they said it's, it doesn't work. It doesn't work, so there's no point in us pushing it anymore. Right. So do, interesting now, yeah. right? Because <laughs> a friend of mine actually had um, her child a couple months before my, and she, they had her take production mm-hmm. shots, and she was doing it at home. Her husband gave it to her at home. However, when I asked about it, they said, no, I, your husband can't give it to you. You have to come in every week, and we do it for you. So it's like, it's different stories, so, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and then they say afterwards, they're like, oh, you know what? It doesn't work anyway, so you don't need to get it. Right, which makes you just think about <laughs> everything within right. the medical system. If, if something so so important can now just be dismissed so easily, right? what what now with all of the other shots you're pushing exactly. or vaccines mm-hmm. you're pushing yeah. or things and, like that? And one note on that, and that's another thing I think we experience, and other people I'm sure they'll experience it. Like, even when you're going through the process of, you know, doing the checkups and all that stuff, take a look at what they're charging you for. There's a couple of times that, you know, they were charging, and it was like, we didn't do that. We didn't didn't have that test. Oh, well, no problem. We'll get rid of it. Mm. They didn't even question it. So, like, that's another thing. And, again, like, just just knowing what they're doing, ask questions around it because... If they were, if they had no problem just erasing one thing, then how many other things that we may have overlooked that some test that they just threw up there? I think they were trying to, they tried to give him a test. I think the baby had, a, what were they, they were trying to tell? He had a diaper rash, and they were trying to give him some weird like test, saying he had something. yeast. It's a diaper so a rash, cream, so they were going to try to run a test. It wasn't working, but when he came out, I did like a natural, some some of a diaper rash. It yeah. cleared up in like a day. Yeah. But, but they, they were, were trying to get us to charge us for a test. Yeah. For, yeast, for yeast, which clearly was a, 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 yeah. a, a, a diaper rash, yeah. mm. you know. So just mm. having that knowledge and and then and then not being afraid to quit. You gotta question everything. This is this is my this is my child. Like so, there's nothing I won't do, mm. right? Nothing. Like I don't I don't. You know, I'm a very straightforward mm-hmm. person, but like even more so when it comes to you know protecting my family. So just that's if it's any advice to give is just question everything. If something feels off, it probably is off, and don't just don't just go along with it just because they're a doctor or they're, you're in a, they're in a hospital. They may feel intimidated. Ask for help. And like I said, I'm glad you were there to help mm-hmm. out. And I do a lot of reading. I do a lot of research. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, I definitely prepared us for a second one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was definitely a lot more prepared. I knew, I knew what to say, what to ask. You know what I mean? He knew how to advocate for me if yes. something was wrong. 
Um, so, you know, with Yasmin, I, again, wanted a natural birth. So, and luckily, um, I was able to do it with the midwife group again. She, the midwives weren't able to deliver Zane because he was early. Right. So I had, you know, some person I never knew, MD. yeah, mm -hmm. um, delivered Zane. So I was able to stick with the midwives for Yasmin and um, I labored at home. Not on purpose, honestly, because it, it happened so fast. Um, you know, <laughs> Zane was sleeping. You know, Free was going Again, to show how she's so nonchalant. Oh, I, don't worry about it. Like, I'm like, you sure like we need I to go to the not, hospital? I'm the type of person where I try not to really be a bother, and I and I have a high pain tolerance. Like, my sister was taking the exam at the time, and I. I knew I was in labor, and I was just like, but Frida left too to go show And him. I wasn't going to leave. And he was leaving, and he's like, you sure you want me to say? I was like, no, man, go, 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 go. It's fine, it's fine, <laughs> go ahead. I'll call you if anything. Um, and my sister's upstairs taking the exam, and I'm here contracting, you know. And I didn't want to say anything because she's doing the exam, mm -hmm. right? So I wait till she was done, and she, you know, when she's done, she's like, why wouldn't you tell me? You know, she's like upset. I was like, it's fine. I called the doctor. The, I called the doctor. They weren't calling me back. I'm like, hey. What the hell? Like, I need someone to call me back. Right. Right She's now. like way too calm. Like, <laughs> you could have even for... called me at that time. I wasn't working with you guys for that birth, but I would have been like, okay, well, tell me the sign symptoms. Yeah. Maybe yeah, we should, I started, we should like, go. I started timing out my contractions, and Good. you know, they finally called me back. And they're like, oh, wait till they get a little closer. And I called her back in like ten minutes. And I was like, yo, I think they're, I think you know, they're speeding up. They're about five minutes apart now. Mm -hmm. uh, she's like, you sure? I was like, yes. She's like, okay, well, you guys can come on in, right? Mm -hmm. So. I get there, um, we got there like, I don't know. I left the house like maybe 6.30. She was born at 9.30. Yeah. Yeah, so she came pretty fast. So we got there, you know, they checked me out. You know, I'm dilated. Um, they get me changed and all that. And they're like, well, do you want to try the water bath? And at first I was like, nah. But then the contracts are hurting. And I was like, you know, let me try the water bath. Anything. So, <laughs> you know, like, let me just do this. So, you know, we get in there and... You know, like they say, like, you know, let us know when you feel pressure. And I was like, okay, like, sure. The baby's not coming right now. I was in the tub for maybe like, like not even, a couple minutes. A I couple feel like minutes, <laughs> and I was like, pressure, <laughs> Free pressure. You know, and they're like, well, do you want to move to the room? I was like, no, no, this baby's coming right here in the tub. So I ended up having a water birth, which is actually really nice. Mm -hmm. It was actually quite comforting. It was a peace. It was peaceful compared to Zane. Yes. It was very peaceful. It was just me and Fareed and. I think the she's midwife. also downplaying like the the whole like birth experience because again she didn't make a sound. She didn't scream. She was like the calmest. All the nurses in there were like, "This is like the calmest birth ever." <laughs> she, she was. She was. She was incredible. Like she just said, "Pressure." I ran outside as a nurse, doctor, get in here. And we were just chilling for a little bit, yeah. and the baby just popped out, and yes. she didn't make no noise. Yeah, it was, a, it was mm -hmm. a lot less chaotic, whereas with Zane, it was like a ton of people in the room. It was like I was pushing, I opened my eyes, and just like doctors and yep. a the bunch Neo of nurses team. over there, and mm -hmm. like, you know, my family here. I didn't even know when my I'm sister got I'm passed out in the she, corner. She passed out yes. next to <laughs> and my sister passed out. I was like, when did you get yes. here? And I'm pushing. Yeah. You know, it was a lot less chaotic, uh, which was the, which was nice. Yeah. It was a lot more peaceful, um, and what was also important to me was um, the delayed like cord clamping, and I wanted that. So you know, she, she came, and I was able to hold her and just get the skin right away, which was lovely. And then, even then, she was still connected to me up until we got they transferred me back to the room, um, and even when they were like you know stitching me back up, she was still on me, which was completely different, different yeah. from Zane. And she really never left my side, only to get checked for maybe like an hour, and that she was with us the whole time. Mm -hmm. And how long did you do your delayed cord clamping for? Uh, I don't even know. It was some time, because it sounds yeah. like you transferred from yeah. the tub to the room. From the tub to the room, and then I delivered the placenta. Yeah, no, yeah, it was completely yeah. dried out when they did it. Beautiful. Awesome, awesome, yeah. awesome. Yeah, and that room, that tub room, is very private. Yeah. So it's just you mm -hmm. in the tub. Mm -hmm. Dad did like a toilet. Yeah, he had some music playing. You know, it was, it was, it was very peaceful. Because I, I ultimately wanted to do a home birth. Yes. Um, I think I reached out to you about that, too. Mm -hmm. um, I even looked into it and I met up with the person about the home birth. The only thing that sucked about it was that insurance doesn't cover it. Right. Which I didn't know, so... 
even though I didn't get to do a home birth, I was kind of and on that note, I got experience in the right yes. in the water bath. But why wouldn't why wouldn't insurance cover that? What do you why do you think? <laughs> Why do you think insurance doesn't cover <laughs> it? You know why I think right? they don't cover it. Yeah, it's, it's they don't have the they, they don't they have the control, control right, over right, what they right. tell you and what they give What's you, offered. and it's a lot less they can bill you for being in a hospital. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why. Yes, that's why I believe the reason why. Absolutely. But what do I know? And then you know, midwives, home birth midwives are more holistic in their approach mm -hmm. to things. Mm -hmm. So you you'll definitely have the delayed cord clamping. Right. There's more experiences where you won't be induced or forcefully forced to go into labor right. early earlier if that wasn't something that was necessary so you know the granny midwives here in america originally were the home births midwives giving birth to families of color mm -hmm. and then eventually one birth was transitioned into the hospital and it was more controlled and dominated by you know the majority race the white races mm -hmm. it became a thing that's more of a business a mm -hmm. charge and so i always encourage families to watch the the business of being born i don't know if you guys ever watched it Ricky Lake did a documentary on home births mm -hmm. and kind of discussing how they are and what happened between that transition mm -hmm. into the hospital. Yeah. And it's something worth everyone watching. Yeah. Just to yeah, kind I'd love of to check that out. see yeah. the difference and see how important that was. Well, beautiful. Thank you for sharing that experience. I'm so happy that you were able to have such an experience yeah. in the hospital because even to that sometimes, it's not as easy as you would you would think it is, but because you had the advocacy, because you guys mm -hmm. stood firm on what your wants and your beliefs were, they were able to respect it. Yeah. Um, and and you know, you knew what you can do, and most right. families don't. Right. And, and simply having a doctor come in on someone wearing that white coat, you just sort of conform to what it is that they want. And it's like, it can be well, intimidating. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. It's very intimidating. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I wanted you for my first birth because. Um, I didn't want to. I didn't want to be pushed to be induced or anything. Cause I mean, I don't know anything, so I need right. someone there who knew what, what everything is. And you know, if you recommend like, you know what, you don't need to be induced. You can actually wait a little longer. Mm -hmm. You know, I need someone to be there to tell me that. Yes. Especially with the maternal mortality rate being so high among Black women, mm -hmm. I need someone there just looking out for me. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's why I definitely, if I definitely recommend the doula <laughs> for anything. Yeah. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. And I was so happy and honored to be a part of your yeah. birth, your first birth experience. Yeah. I just wish I used you a little bit more. I mean, yes. I didn't get a chance to, but yeah. It was, yeah, it was, it was still an experience. It's an experience, for sure. Yes, that was needed on, on both ends. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that. And so, we want to take a break real quick? I mean, I didn't know if you had more or if you wanted to tell me. You can take a break, though. We'll take a break real quick. Is there anything else that you guys wanted to discuss? More? No, I think I mean I, I can I can go on further, but I think I got if my you were to from go my further, message. What would well, you it, have? it would no? I mean, just more around just the, that experience of like how they just it's a it's a they pressure you they pressure mm -hmm. people like like I just think about it as a, like okay think about single mothers that have to give birth like without somebody being there to advocate for them without a doula they are that, that's just like an automatic they're gonna do whatever yeah. the doctors tell them to do yeah. Cause the doctor, right? Like, and, and a lot of us just don't know. We don't know that we have rights. We don't know what the true intention is behind this stuff. It ain't for your health. It ain't because they care about you. They see this every day. They're so desensitized mm -hmm. to, to to the whole process. They have directives that come from up top. Right. This is what we gotta make. I gotta have 50% of kids vaccinated, or I'm not gonna get my $50,000 kicker. My wife wants to go to Aruba. Like, they don't understand the business side of it. So it's hard for them to say, oh, how can this guy in this white coat that was so nice to me not really care about me? Right. Like, they don't understand that. So I think that it just knowing the information behind, like you said, the business of, mm -hmm. like, I, my whole process and thought of this, and again, like, it's not against anybody. If you like, if you're in the vaccines, that's fine. Like, right. whatever, everybody's had their choice. But mm -hmm. I believe from the moment a child is born, they are creating a customer for life. It's the best business model ever. Because the minute you, you like the whole process of like a, a child being born, birth, like that's that's nothing that man even totally understands, yeah, I believe. Right? Because we don't give life. God gives life. So that process is is, is already been made it's perfect made, right. before man even comes with any of his modern medicine inventions or anything like that. And by disrupting that, giving a mother why, why would you give why would you give a mother some uh, a shot while she's 
in about to be in labor with a child that's coming two months early. And then to give a child a shot before his immune system's even halfway even starting to be built together. You're breaking that special mm -hmm. bond that the, our creator has, 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 has made perfect, right? And by doing that, then now you look at like, okay, then you gotta have your checkup in a month and then we gotta give them that vaccine. Right. And so you're already getting that child prepped for, and then by the time you're 50 years old, you got a, a medicine thing, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, of pills you gotta take. Yeah. And they're making money off of you from the time you're born until the time you die. That's my theory behind it. You think there's any good intentions behind anything? I don't, I think the system, <laughs> There's, I don't think there's any, I think the system is corrupt. I think there's really good people that work in the system. And if you look at the outliers, you see the doctors that retire and speak out of, against, they get like blackballed and you have to ask yourself why, right? Because they've seen the corruption for so long and it's like, it's weighing on their heart. I think the system doesn't have people in their best interest. Now there's good people there. I mean, a lot of good, I know really good nurses and good doctors. Right. I've spoken with doctors from other countries. They say they hate the way America studies medicine. They hate it. Why do we not have free health care? We pay all this money. You work a job and you got good, you got good benefits. You still got to pay a copay. You still got, why? If they cared about, it's almost impossible to have somebody care about your health and care about their pockets. It's a, it's a conflict of interest because if you got, if you got an, a money incentive to give somebody this, you think you're human. You're thinking, oh, well, you know, I want to go on vacation. I want that new car. I got to pay off my student loans. Right. Maybe I might ah, just give them that shot. They may not need it, but just give, you know, because it, it's a conflict of interest whenever you have some kind of financial gain tied to, um, you know, doing what's best for your, uh, you know, your, um, your patient. Mm -hmm. You know, so I believe there's always going to be some sort of conflict there. Maybe somebody was like, you know, I don't care about the money. But we all know money makes people do all kinds of things. And if, right. if that's the incentive behind it, and if you look at how big pharma, mm -hmm. like I work in sales, right? Like that's one of the reasons why I never got into uh, medical sales, right? And I had an opportunity to, cause I never believed in it. And it, was, didn't, it didn't sit right with me. And I know what they get paid. Mm -hmm. they, get, we get paid they get paid a big commission to get this doctor to push this drug. Right. They come in, they bring lunch to the office. They oh, bring 100%. All of these they take the doctors out to, to oh, get them yeah, all the yeah. drinks to go play, mm -hmm. to play golf. Like, yeah. Y'all don't see the business behind it. Like right. they do that in my office too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pharmaceutical, yeah, right? Yeah. There's movies about it. Like there's information out there, but you know, I just don't think people look at it that way. And, and again, when you're in that situation, you're about right. to give birth, a doctor's telling you what to do, what mm -hmm. you gonna say? You're you're assuming they are here for your best interest. Yeah. I'm pregnant, you specialize in caring mm -hmm. for me, you're gonna take great care of me. But then that even now rolls over into the high mortality rates and why women of color are dying. Mm -hmm. Because now whatever that personal doctor's views are against black women, you would never know or against mm -hmm. the, yeah. they have their own biases and that mm -hmm. simple moment might take place where now they're not thinking in your complete best interest because of their own mm -hmm. personal perspectives. Yeah. They and got their own life. They, yeah. you know, they got their own personal it's still work for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say like, even after I had, after I had, I gave birth, like I never saw a doctor again. Like they never come to check on me. Right. See how the baby's doing. I don't see them the next day at all. Mm -hmm. You just I, see the nurses. They come in, they yeah, catch that baby, yeah. and then they're gone. Yeah. So it's like they had to do that for maybe 20 other women on the floor. So in that moment, you think that they're thinking fully in your best interest <laughs> yeah. or holistically. Yeah, no, they're thinking what it is that I need to get you to give birth, maybe on their shift. Yeah. Or well, there's by six, to six get the section. room empty, to grab another yeah. mom to come in. And, and there are some times where doctors are, you know, working with midwives, working right. with people that are really interested and invested and have mm -hmm. the space and ability to care for you would be beneficial. But that is why I always encourage families to learn about the various providers that mm -hmm. you can receive care from, especially during pregnancy, because it will it will alter the outcome right. of your birth experience. Exactly, yeah. And that's why I switched from OBGYN group to midwives. To midwives. Mm -hmm. Right. I just wasn't comfortable at the practice I was going to. You know, it was like a practice of maybe like six people, but you don't know who's going to give, you know, who's going to be there in the room with you. And maybe you didn't even like that doctor. You right. Know? Right. So at the practice I went to, it was only two midwives. You know, yes. a smaller, more intimate. They actually got to know me. Anytime I went to the OBG, I went, they just, you know, listen to the baby. All right, you're all done. Like, I was there for maybe five minutes, not right. even. And with your midwife, it can run maybe up to an hour sometimes it, when yeah. you're sitting and talking with them. And 
Yeah, they actually listen out for your concerns. Right. Um, Asking how like, life is going. Yeah, they even ask me like what I want when I'm ready to give birth. Like, what is it? Right. You know, that way they're not pushing anything on me when the time comes. If I already say I don't want an epidural, when I was in there, they didn't even ask me. They said, well, you know, do you want anything? No. Right. But they only asked me one time. Yes. Instead, they offered, you know, like the water bath or something else mm-hmm. like that. Alternatives to coping. Right. Mm-hmm. Opposed to a pharmaceutical right. or like a, right. a medication mm-hmm. now, too. And then those interventions can lead to other interventions and other interventions. Right. And now you're here at a place not aware that the reason why you're here is because of the series of event interventions that they've right. taken when your your labor was progressing quite mm-hmm. fine just mm-hmm. giving it some time would have been enough for it to yeah. proceed the way we needed it to be mm-hmm. perfect perfect pretty sure you were still rolling on that oh of course okay good <laughs> because one time he was like oh i mean, we should do that again yeah, i was yeah, like wait a minute <laughs> Started, you know, Reed was yeah. Music. I said, "If we <laughs> take this place, yes." That's what I needed. That was good. Perfect. Yeah. Every time, certain points, I was like, "Anthony's gonna use this as a clip." Yeah, I was like, "Please don't move." The B was like, mm-hmm. so "I'm like, I can't move because Anthony's like, gonna use it as a clip." Right, I hope y'all don't move because this B. I thought y'all were going. Go crazy. <laughs> and then I look at y'all and y'all flailing for the bees, and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> So this was a very insightful conversation that we've really had. Thank you guys for sharing your your intimate experience with your first birth experience and then even diving into your second one. And for Reed, bringing your wealth of knowledge to the podcast, I'm sure viewers a couple cents. are <laughs> going to appreciate it. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to encourage individuals to do more research. Yeah. And that is exactly if, what if, we if, want. If nothing, you don't have to listen to me, but at least just do your own right. Right. research, understand what your rights are you know exactly. don't just feel like you ask have to questions. comply yeah mm-hmm. always ask questions right sure. right right and so with that being said thank you guys thank all of the listeners <laughs> and we Anytime. out thank you thank you